In today's day and age, when interior spaces have become a necessary expression of personal taste, veneers have helped numerous homes and offices find their signature styles and realize their interior's potential. Veneers have not only adorned spaces, but have also served the purpose of defining trends. They are only a natural progression of things to come, of art and functionality to unify. Today, we are at the state-of-the-art manufacturing plant of Green Deco Wood in Beror, Rajasthan, India, where we will see how a log of wood turns into the product we all love. Green Deco Wood is the number one natural decorative veneer brand in the country and a super brand offering the world's most striking veneer range sourced from the most exotic timber from across the globe. Veneers have been around forever, beautifying our homes, offices and interior spaces. Let's take a look now, step by step, how veneers come to be a part of our lives. First, let's begin with the most basic and most important first step, timber selection. The timber used to manufacture our veneers is 100% imported, procured from places like Africa, Europe, America, Brazil. It comes from selective log wood handpicked by experts. All the logs are inspected, sorted by species and stored under optimal conditions to avoid any deterioration. Next, the logs are cut to required size. This is called blocking. Then begins beaming. Using modern sawing methods, the logs are cut into pieces. But the key to the operation of how and where a log should be cut depends on the slicing method. Slicing primarily is the part of the process which gives different patterns to the veneer and thus also determining the type of cut. Also determining the type of cut is the type of species of the log. Now let's see the type of cuts which are primarily in use. First up, the flat cut or crown cut in which the veneer is cut tangentially to the growth rings producing crown cut veneer with the pattern that is characterized by straight grain intermixed with cathedrals. This cut retains the mother structure of timber. Then there's the quarter cut, where the veneer cuts perpendicular to the growth rings, producing quarter cut veneer with a consistent straight grain striped appearance. Next, the semi-rotary or rift cut. In this cut, the veneer is obtained by fixing a quarter log on the stay log. This results in veneer with a striped grain or in the form of a half cathedral. This is mainly used in American woods. And finally, the rotary cut, where the log is centered on a lathe and turned against a broad cutting knife set into the log at a slight angle. Now that the wood has been cut according to need, it's time for the seasoning of wood. To put it simply, the boiling of wood is commonly known as seasoning of wood. This is done to soften the fibers and ensure smooth slicing. Cut logs are put into baths or steamers and completely submerged at temperatures ranging from 50 to 90 degrees Celsius for periods lasting from anything between 8 hours to 7 days, depending on the wood. Now that the logs are ready, it's time for the fun to begin. The flitches to finally take form. The logs now find their way to slicing machines where these logs metamorphose into numerous thin slices, or as they are called, leaves. After slicing, one by one the sliced leaves carefully enter the dryer to bring them to the required moisture content. This is of significance because veneers of dry consistency are brittle and not workable. On the other hand, moist veneers can become mouldy, thus no longer usable. Next, through expert eyes, the leaves are checked, graded and then clip marked. Then the leaves find their way to the hot press. This is an exclusive measure taken by us 
to minimize the gap percentage and avoid overlapping during stitching. This also maintains the moisture level and flattens the leaves. Now the leaves are ready for the next important step, grouping. The leaves are manually grouped to match the grains. To put it simply, identical or similar sheets are sorted. The process too has its types. The book match, the slip match, the mix match, the head and tail match. The most popular of all is the book match. Book match too has its categories. First is perfect match. All the leaves are perfectly matched to each other in all aspects. This is a very rare matching order because even though the size may match perfectly, the patterns rarely do. In the random match, the leaves are placed in the ascending order, from the smaller leaf to the widest leaf. At the moment, this is the most popular matching style in use. As for the center match or log cut, the biggest piece of leaf at the center is matched in descending order from both the ends towards the center and a group is formed. While this is no longer in use, it was quite helpful in paneling. While with the book match, the consecutive leaves are always mirror images of each other during stitching, the slip match avoids any kind of grain formation. The leaves are placed straight one after another. In mix and match, individual leaves from different bundles are picked. The leaves can be both from the same or different logs, but have to be similar dimensionally and also in terms of pattern. Then they are aligned and stitched together to the required size, making this the perfect matching group. Next, the head and tail match, where the leaves are placed in such a way that the grain patterns on each consecutive leaf are the reverse of each other. The best part about this grouping style is that when sheets are matched and cut, we always get a perfect parallel pattern on both the sides. From the same log, bundles of different groups may be formed. The key differentiator here being the graining patterns or the timber moment as it's called. Once grouped, the leaves are bundled. The number of leaves for a natural veneer bundle is a standard of 24 to 32 leaves. A greater number in the bundle is possible only with artificial veneers. Along with manufacturing our own veneers, we also import veneer leaf bundles through our exclusive channels to give our customers the best from around the world. These veneer bundles, once selected, also go through the same process of grouping and then proceed further in the production process. After bundling, there's head cutting. The edges are trimmed parallel to avoid any gaps during stitching. Then the leaves are sewed together to obtain the desired size using special threads and we see the leaves taking the form of sheets. Next, the edges are taped and the sheet is ready in stitched form. Now the sheets go through quality checks, making sure every sheet meets our prime standards, following which the sheets are grouped, graded and group numbers are allocated. Then the sheets find their way to the assembly line where the veneer is pressed onto a substrate such as plywood to strengthen it. The sheets now find their way to the hot press where they are bonded with the plywood. Different kinds of adhesives are used to do the same, but Green Deco Wood uses special MITT technology for better bonding to avoid uneven spread of adhesive, hence keeping the original colour and texture of the veneer intact. Continuing on our standard of quality, the plywood used by us, 100% high density garjan wood. And finally, after leaving the hot press, the edges are trimmed and finished. The sheets side sanded, then surface sanded, 
graded, marked and labeled. The product is marked in such a way that when required, different parts of the log can be easily traced back to their origin at any time. Finally, ready for dispatch, these sheets will find their way into our lives. There are almost no limits when it comes to veneers. Mahogany, teak, walnut, rosewood, whatever wood is chosen, the story and the origin of the wood itself can be seen in the figures. These are the inherent properties the wood develops from the natural conditions like wind, rain, etc. It has faced over the years and that is what gives veneers its various types. Like the burl. Burls are obtained from the rare wood outgrowths appearing on trees. Its grain is twisted and interlocked, yielding a very peculiar and highly figured wood prized for its beauty and rarity. Crotch is formed by the intersection of limb or branch with the main trunk. Its outer grain tends to have a feather-like appearance and is typically used in the reverse of the way it actually grows. Clusters. Heavy logs display a high density of pips forming clusters around the log. And these clusters of pips in turn are displayed onto the veneer. These give a very rustic and country style feel. Pommel. Pommel is the French term for dappled and is especially apt for describing highly figured wood. A high degree of luster gives this medium to dark, reddish brown wood a three dimensional effect. Figured. Figured veneer textures are created naturally over time with the wind. As the climate changes, the wood textures are developed on the trees. The smoked. Smoked veneers are created when a wood log is smoked through the process of fumigation. This changes the surface color of the veneer. The color then becomes almost totally resistant to aging and the effects of light. And the dye. The veneers are bleached and pressure dyed to ensure 100% penetration and color correction. The dye penetrates the entire thickness of the veneer. Whatever type is chosen, one thing is for certain. Veneers improve the work of numerous craftsmen in countless other industries and help beautify our homes and lives with their natural beauty. So, Features versus defects. It is most often that people confuse the appearance of a feature with that of a defect. It's important to understand the difference between the two. A feature is a general characteristic of any lumber which is not developed by weathering of wood but is a part of its basic existence. Features of the veneers are their natural beauty and should never be mistaken for a defect. Defects, on the other hand, can occur during the manufacturing and handling process or due to long time weathering. Hair pith flecks, drops, sapwood, mineral stain, sound knot, buttons. These are all features. A natural defect in a lumber is observed due to extreme weather conditions or aging of the wood. And admittedly, certain defects are not natural and are caused during manufacturing or polishing or storage. Holes, stains, blisters, tension wood, sanding through, pour whitening, unsound knot, gum, these are defects. But to avoid such defects, certain precautions can be taken. And in case certain problems do occur, simple solutions are also available. Let's have an intimate look at these simple solutions and also some other precautionary measures that can be taken to keep your veneers beautiful. First, let's talk about storage. Always place the veneer face to face and stack them in the vertical position. This simple way also helps in avoiding oil marks with veneer sheet. Since the plywood is made of 100% garjan wood and garjan wood will have oil marks, it's important to store the veneer face to face and not back to back, else the oil mark on the surface will appear. Make sure that the place of storage is clean and dry 
and not too dusty or moist. If it's stored at a place with high moisture, the veneer could start losing its original color. To avoid this from happening, it's important to immediately apply one coat of sealer as soon as the veneers arrive. This will prevent moisture from rising and also not allow dust to settle in the grain of the veneer, protecting it from the elements. While working with white color veneers, using sealer coat with titanium dioxide at a ratio of 100 grams per liter is recommended. Next, let's take a look at the measures we can take when cutting. While working with veneers, be aware of the sheet numbers and what kind of saw you might be using. Forward bending or backward bending. Make sure that the saw has been sharpened and always cut in the direction of the grain pattern. For backward teeth saw, hold the sheet facing veneer side and then start cutting. While for forward cutting teeth, cut the sheet holding the sheet facing ply side. Always sand the veneer with sanding paper to avoid any kind of chipping. Once the veneer fixing starts and before polishing begins, clean the veneer. If external spots occur, clean them. As for nail marks, there's a simple solution. First, to even avoid this from happening, try using headless nails or scotch tape while fixing veneers. And even if the nail marks appear, worry not. Lightly scratch the surface of the veneer with sandpaper. Now with the dust that's produced, mix the dust with putty, then fill the nail marks with the paste and behold, the nail marks disappear. In case a problem of overlapping occurs, then in the affected area, scratch the surface with a file or an RE and then rub it with sandpaper. This will even out the surface and the veneer will get back its smooth finish. Then there are a few things to remember while coating or polishing. From the first coat to the second coat, give the veneer a period of eight hours in between. This is important as after coating, fumes are created, which take time to evaporate. Never ever apply any chalk powder on veneers, especially on open pore veneers. Chalk powder may fill in the pores of the veneer and also affect the overall aesthetic finish of the veneer. Veneers have already been sanded before they arrive at your doorstep, so chalk powder is a strict no-no. And while using sealer, Make sure that the solvent and the sealer used are from one company. Then there's the problem of polish crack marks. If polish crack can be seen, then first, with the help of paint remover, remove the polish and check if the veneer is intact and not cracked. If the color of the veneer has changed, then you have to understand that it has been wrongly polished or the wrong polish has been used. Don't worry, there's a simple solution. First, remove the unwanted color by sanding on the veneer using sandpaper and then apply the right kind or better brand of polish. To make sure you are using the right kind of polish, try it on a small sample of the veneer first. In case of dyed veneer, if after polishing you see a different color, the problem is with the polish. It is advisable to use clear finish to retain the dyed color. Now let's talk about veneer finishing. This is one of the most important steps in veneer application. Wood finishes are essential for protecting wood surfaces and enhancing their beauty by highlighting the grain of the wood. Wood finishes are classified as solvent-based and water-based wood finishes. There are three types of finishes. The acrylic finish, the polyurethane finish, the melamine finish recommended according to use of the veneer, interior or exterior, and application, horizontal or vertical. There's the melamine finish, the most commonly used finish for a veneer due to its ease of application and availability, and is available in gloss and matte finish. The polyurethane finish. Polyurethane is very popular nowadays and is easily available too. It is commonly known as PU finish. A thicker layer of this polish gives better protection to the veneer surface and has higher water resistance. Post application, it smells pungent for some time. It is available in gloss and matte. It can also be tinted for special effects. 
It should be applied using a spray-on. And the acrylic finish. Acrylic finish is the latest introduction to the market. This is the most premium wood finishing solution. It is best suited for interior use and is recommended for horizontal surfaces as well. It is a fast drying finish compared to other alternatives. It can be easily cleaned with soap and water. Available only in gloss, the finish result is a very thick top layer that gives the appearance of placing a glass or acrylic sheet on the top of the veneer. Again, it should be applied using spray-on. And now you know. This is the amazing journey the veneers take to finally become a part of our decor. And whatever the space, veneers fill our lives with vibrant interiors.